The eight pages document that is the, the, the basic protocol we propose for this type of regional control programs is made up of five phases, each of them with their its own objective and methodology. In the first phase, in the first phase we want to know if a given area meets certain requirements for starting a, a project. Then in, in phase two, we want to know how many sites, how many peak sites are located in a given area, how many and where they are located, and some basic characteristics. In the phase three, we apply some uh, diagnosis and pad wrap to categorize each of the sites or uh, neighborhood of sites in that area. And finally, based on this information, we design the pest control strategies and finally the execution and monitoring of those strategies. The key ingredient in all this regional control process is the local people, the local veterinarians, the local practitioners, the willingness of them to share information, to participate and collaborate. So our experience uh, tells us that that is the, the key element in each of all these different projects. And well, now Laura is going to show you with more detail each of these uh, five phases applied to the program in Sonora. Thank you. Good morning to all of you and thanks for being here. Thank you, Enrique. And as Enrique just told you, what I'm going to do right now is to present uh, the different phases that Enrique just uh, spoke about, but I'll show you some practical examples of the projects I have been involved. I've been involved in three projects right now that are focused on regional control more than eradication. We're really thinking of regional control. So it's two pro it's a very small pilot project in Mexico, then the Sonora project, and then a project that I work in Quebec while I was up there in Canada. So as Enrique said, the first part is the feasibility study, and I think this is really important. This is a very important part of the success of the project because at first everybody's going to have a lot of enthusiasm and things are would like to be involved, particularly right now that I feel that there's like a wave again about uh, purse control. So, but in order to have success, I think that these six are these six uh, points that I'm presenting here are really key to decide if the re region or the group or whatever you want to call it is really a candidate to have success. So what one of the most important things for us and our experiences people have to really be very well organized and know what their role is. If you really don't know what your role is, what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, then it's really complicated to have people and the project rolling. So in Sonora, for example, the way we organize ourselves is this is a producers driven program, which I think is very, very important because as us as a veterinarian community, we might be interested in the project, but if the producers really don't don't buy into the project, then it's very difficult. For us, it was a surprise because the producers called us and asked us to help them organize this project, and that was very interesting. As you can see there, they are paying a certain amount. They decided to pay a certain amount, and this is, might be different from the states because in Mexico we don't have checkoff. So here the producers decided we're going to give some money. It's not a lot of money, but this money is paying for the coordinator because we need somebody to really take you know this as a job and get paid to do it so this is paying for the coordinator but at the same time what this did because the, the government said oh these producers are very well organized they want to do it so now we have access to both state and federal funding and all this mo money is paying for the sequencing is paying for the ELISA is paying for a lot of things so when they saw we were organized it really went it started going ahead the other very important thing is communication the first two phases are phases 
<coughs> excuse me, that are sort of a little bit, uh, a lot of information, a lot of meetings, but you don't see results. And you know that there's people that really want to see actions and results in the first step. So um, right now, we're, we, we, when we were working there, Enrique and myself, we were having monthly meetings, Skype communication every two weeks, three weeks, or whenever was needed. And I think that was important. And the third part that I think was all, has also been key is the website. We started a website where everything that's going on in the campaign is there. Uh, if, for example, you cannot be there, all the meetings are, are taped, so you can see what happened, all the information is there. However, there is uh, something that you have to do. You have to cooperate, both paying and also giving the information that we request. So if you don't do that, you don't have a login, you don't have access to the info. The other way, you can have access to what, everything that's going on, so if you're too busy, you're not able to go to meetings, then you'll get the information there. This more, phase more or less takes about four months. It depends on the proactivity of the group, but it, it more or less took us about four, four months. Then we have uh, the, the identification of sites. You really want to know what, what's there, and as you saw, Bob showed the maps, the, um, where the farms are, what sort of farms are, the type of production. This takes also about four months. So as you can see, it takes eight months to get people organized. I hope I, could t I would be able to tell you it takes less, but it does not. It, well, if it's a small project, because in this project we're talking 124 different systems, so it's a big mapping and getting all the information took us quite a while. In this too, this is very, this is key. You have to communicate a lot. You have to tell people what's going to happen. You have to remind them of the Im economical impact of first virus. If not, people sort of like really don't know exactly where you're going until you get to phase three. Phase three for us has been a really uh, fun phase and this is where we're at right now, which is uh, to determine status, flow, etc. And this is a challenge because uh, this is not from Sonora, but Spencer Wayne shared this uh, with me. This is just the, all the movement of pigs. All, it doesn't mean that there are, the roadmap should also be there. Because at the end of the day, one very important key point is we need to understand how pigs, where pigs are moved to positive, negative areas, etc. So this is a lot of work, but this is an eye opener for people because they start understanding how important it is to understand where are the negative faces, where are the positive, etc., and uh, how are we going to be moving pigs. Then, of course, to get the status, because at first it's just the historical, but then you need to get the real status of uh, both the license and PCRs. One thing that's also been an eye-opener is global biosecurity. Uh, we run these pad drops and everybody said, oh, why are you doing this? I have great biosecurity, I know what to do, etc. And this was a real eye-opener because a lot of people thought they didn't have anything else to improve in their systems and PADRAP gave us a lot of good information on where and how we could improve the biosecurity. And people are starting to understand it. it's just not one or two different things, it's really global biosecurity. And so, you know, uh, this is just to portray, it. we ask people to go to our farms and have all this uh, coveralls and stuff. I wish we would have these things like this, that if you wouldn't take a shower, or wash your hands, it will ring, but we don't. So this is just an example of when common sense is not used, particularly in sometimes in, in our farms. And I want to tell you something. Uh, this is uh, Guy Pierre Martineau shared this slide with me, and this is a real life case where in South Africa, the patient in room 311 die every Friday. And so everybody says, what's happening? And what's happening? So they, you can imagine they quarantine the hospital, the patient's family, etc. But then nobody was using common sense to solve the problem. So somebody from the AST area solution team came and said, why don't we go on Fridays and see what's happening in room 311? Well, what happened is that the cleaning lady was disconnecting the respirator and connecting her vacuum cleaner, and that's why they were dying. And I think that with PERS virus, a lot of the time this happens. So we really need to, we not have the science, we have the tools, the, the community has really developed a lot of things, but sometimes common sense is not used. So I think that it's important to use common sense. Yeah. <laughs>
And so here it's, uh, we're up to a year in the program to get all the big picture and this is where we're at in most of the projects where Enrique and myself have been working. And up to this part, it's fun, it's um, really nice. And then the two phases that are really um, very tailored to each system and to each farm and to each project, which is to design the pest control. And to design this, it means we have all the different, um, different strategies that have been already um, developed. And so we will, we try to develop or to establish different uh, strategies for each different group, farm, system, etc. This is the part where it comes tricky because some people are willing to jump in immediately, some people don't want to do some things, some people don't understand the importance of doing certain things. But that's where we are, uh, that's I think where the creativity of us as veterinarians, the scientific community is going to come in and help a lot our producers. And this is uh, just to show you how complicated it could be. This is part of the Sonora group where we have 91 clusters and we don't have time to talk about clusters, etc. But if you, in the break, we can talk about it. But eventually Enrique brought it on, back down to 23 groups so we would be able to communicate and have really working groups and not just the general cluster idea. Again, this, this, is, this only takes us about two or three months. And finally, the execution and monitoring phase. And this is the hardest part because we really have to make sure that whatever we design as a plan, we really have to do it. We really have to work on it. We have to monitor if all uh, the ideas are being done. And as I told you, this is also tailored for each different system. So this is going to change. And this is where all of us as veterinarians are going to have a lot of input and work to do. And for us, it will take at least two years and probably four, depending on the area, how complicated it is. Right now, we've been working with small projects. The Sonora project is a bigger project. And what we've seen is that um, we need to take, we continue with enthusiasm. We need to work with everybody. And it's not that easy to get everybody uh, working at the same rhythm. We have some parallel actions that are just, we have to do them at the same time we do our work, which is, you know, the ongoing diagnostics, the PADRAP surveys, as Enrique showed you with his maps and the way he is doing this to keep, up, of course, confidentiality. You can see how an area was in red and green and yellow and how it changes through time. And that will allow us to understand what actions were taken or were not taken or were mistakenly taken to take an area because we've seen some areas that were green and now are red and we are just starting to analyze all that data. And for us, the last part, modeling and information generation is going to be a great part to work with all of you guys because we think that there is no model established for this erratic virus and this complicated virus and I think that as we develop all these different projects as we have done with Bob Morris and with his projects, we've learned a lot of things but I think we have a lot of learn to learn yet. So in the future I think we'll have much more information and uh, probably it'll go easier. I'm not sure with perspires if things can go easier, but we'll see what the future says. Uh, just uh, one more slide. One thing that has really been very encouraging in working with the people in Sonora and other producers around in, both in Quebec and the small project in Mexico, the Tehuacan project, is that the producers are really taking, uh, Bob just mentioned that Dr. Straw said that, um, uh, that's something important. In Sonora, the producers, they don't want it still to be ruled by the government, but they have decided to become an independent entity where they can st start establishing certain rules. And they took these ideas from the shrimp. In the area of Sonora, there's a lot of shrimp farms, and the shrimp farms really dictate when you can harvest, when you can get water, when can, you can do everything, because they had a virus which is called the white spot which presented a lot of the challenges per virus presents and they were having problems because they were transmitting it by just moving the water into the different uh, farms so now they have regulated everything out of these has come that the producers are not just interested in working with Pierce virus, now we're working with, all, uh, with mycoplasma, APP, influenza. So it's a global program and that's their own initiative. They have realized how much it is costing to them all this, uh, the economic impact of diseases. So it's great. It's coming out of them. They're asking us, do this, do this. 
And I'm saying I'm not uh, uh, involved anymore with the project, but I still feel to myself, I'm sorry, but they, that's what they did when we were with them. And then they decided no more live uh, virus inoculation, and this was because we could follow certain cases when people were doing this, and then other farms got contaminated. So that's interesting for us. It is a high dense uh, area, so the the panorama was there present for, the, for it to be certain aerosol transmission, and we did find some uh, of that happening. So now they decided they're not going to use it. They've decided we're going to work a lot on biosecurity. We saw that our biosecurity is not really good, so and also working quite a bit on immunity. Finally, I think that these projects will not advance at all if we don't have leadership, communication, and more leadership.